Uh, RFC generally stands for request for comment. Um, it was a standard created in the early days of the internet. There's a whole series of several thousand of them. Uh, it was a way of people that were building the internet before the internet was the internet uh, to just put out a document saying, hi, I came up with a cool idea. I would like some comments on it. Um, specifically within the chef community, uh, we've sort of adopted it to fulfill three different functions within uh, how we build chef. So the first is to have new features, new big changes, new processes within the chef community uh, discussed publicly, documented publicly, and decided publicly. So the, the, the documents all live in a GitHub repository. It's under the chef org. The repository is called chef-rfcs. Uh, all proposed RFCs are just pull requests, and the existing RFCs are markdown text files in there. Um, all public, you can read them as much as you want. Uh, all discussion about them uh, happens in a mix of uh, GitHub pull request comments and IRC meetings. I'll get, I'll get to those in a second. And the decisions on them are all public. They happen uh, either on IRC or on the pull request, uh, and they are all uh, handled by a team of volunteers. So what goes into an RFC? The sort of core pieces are the what, why, and how of the change. So what is going to go into this change? Uh, will it be a change to our process? Will it be a new feature for Chef? Uh, is it a new description of, uh, of an informational, uh, uh, informational document? Like, what platforms do we support? Um, that's in the what. The why is what is causing this change to be made. Are we fixing an old bug? Is there a new use case that we figured out? Uh, are we documenting something that we've just always done but never wrote down? And then the how is what is going to actually be done. Is, a, is there going to be a patch to the code? Is this document all that we need? Uh, who is volunteering to write it? Stuff like that. There's a couple more specific pieces of information, the type, status, and copyright. So there's three types of RFCs. The first is by far the dominant one. Standards track RFCs describe a feature for Chef or for a related project. So these are things like uh, adding the new file specificity system. Uh, or I want to add a new resource. There's been a couple of RFCs for adding new Windows resources into Chef. Uh, there's informational RFCs, which are really just making a, a document public using the RFC process. So for example, the platform support guide, which states which platforms are supported by Chef, Chef Server, and Chef DK. And there's process RFCs, uh, like the maintenance and governance processes, which are just, again, they're, they're documents, they're not code, but we're trying to come up with a way to publicize the way that the community works and to be able to change it and discuss changes to it. Um, so the status field, uh, these were based on the Python PEP process, so we sort of use these the same way. Uh, draft status means I'm submitting this for consideration. Accepted means it has been accepted. Rejected, rejected. Withdrawn means I as the author am withdrawing this before it is accepted or rejected, either because I think it needs to be completely reworked and I'll resubmit it later, or because you know maybe the, the use case that I thought we needed a whole new feature for is actually already covered. Uh, final is only used with standards track RFCs. It refers to a feature that has been implemented and is shipped, uh, meaning we can't discuss this feature anymore because it's live. It's out there. Uh, if you wanted to make a new RFC, then you could use the replaced status to say we have obsoleted an old one, uh, but once an RFC is final, that means it's too late to say that I did a poor design. And more importantly, on the copyright, is lack thereof. Uh, all of the Chef RFCs are placed into the public domain to the degree possible based on local law. Uh, if, they, if they cannot be placed in the public domain, we're using the CC0 from Creative Commons. So uh, what this means is that they are not owned by Chef Software, uh, whereas the, the code is copyright to Chef Software or to the author who contributes it. These documents are truly public. Um, they can never be relicensed because they are given to the world. So what is the process for these? Um, four basic steps. You write up a new, uh, a new Chef RFC. If you look in RFC 0, which is the RFC that documents the RFC process, uh, there is a template. So you can grab the template off of GitHub, and you can write whatever RFC you think we need. Um, you'll open up a pull request against the repository with a new file. Uh, there will generally be some comments in there to, to start with as people sort of figure out what it is that you're proposing, what their feedback is on it, do they think it's a good idea, a bad idea. Uh, eventually, it will come up for discussion in an IRC meeting. Once, sometimes uh, we discuss them over the course of multiple weeks if it's a, a really big topic or if we're not sure how to, how to move forward. But it'll come up in an IRC meeting. Uh, it will get approved, hopefully, by uh, one of, the, uh, one of the, the lieutenants or the project lead. And then you have implicitly volunteered to implement it unless specified otherwise in the RFC. Uh, so pretty simple process. Um, general GitHub workflow, just these are markdown documents instead of Ruby files. So I mentioned uh, IRC meetings. 
They happen uh, 9 a.m. in Seattle time. So wherever you are in the world, they will stay at 9 a.m. Seattle time. Sorry, daylight savings is a thing. Um, every Thursday morning. Uh, in them, uh, RFCs. Yes. Um, RFCs are discussed by the, the whole community. Um, we have a, a delegated authority structure, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, your, RFC, your RFC can be accepted either by the lieutenant for the subsystem if it's related only to, say, Windows. I want to add a new resource for Windows. Lieutenant for, for Windows can be the one that accepts it. Otherwise, it falls to the project lead, uh, normally Adam. Uh, and then there's an RFC editor team who will sort of help shepherd you through the process uh, once it's accepted, get it merged in, assign a new RFC number, and then you've got an RFC. It's a thing. Uh, any questions on the RFC process? Cool. So I mentioned these uh, leads and, and lieutenants. So there's an RFC, RFC 30. It is the, the project maintenance policy. Uh, it defines specific roles. So there's the single project lead. The default project lead is Adam Jacob, as he wrote Chef, and therefore he gets to own it until such time as he decides he doesn't want to. Uh, however, for the month of April, because Adam is taking a very well-deserved vacation, John Cowie will actually be stepping in as project lead, which is really cool because that's a company product that is being now led by someone that doesn't actually work for Chef Software. Um, so there is one project lead. Under them are the lieutenants. There is one lieutenant per component. Uh, and then under those are the maintainers. Each different component has a maintainer team. Uh, maintainers get commit bit. And then contributors are under there. Contributors are anyone that's sending in pull requests but doesn't have an explicit commit bit yet. Um, so I mentioned the lieutenants map to components. What exactly is a component? They're, they're not specific, like it's not a subfolder or a specific repository, but they're conceptual. Uh, so there are components for OS-specific code, like there is a component for FreeBSD and a component for Windows and a component for CentOS. There's also a generic component called Chef Core, which is just everything that doesn't fall into the rest of those. There's components for some of the major test tooling uh, repos like Chef Spec and Test Kitchen. And I, uh, there's a dot, 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 because we're sort of slowly rolling this out over the community. If you think there is a thing that should be a component but is not recognized anywhere, you should talk to everyone. You should talk to Adam, um, talk to the rest of the lieutenants, and make your case. And if they agree with you, then you can be the lieutenant of anything that you want to be. Um, so uh, if you are a maintainer, um, the way the contribution process works, uh, if, you are, if you're not a maintainer, is you uh, submit a pull request to, say, the Chef repository. Um, you have to sign a CLA still. Uh, there is a bot that will remind you. Uh, then within the, the maintainers of that component, if you get uh, two plus one votes, so, so two people saying, yes, I think this should be merged, then one of those maintainers will merge it. Uh, if any of the maintainers throws a minus one, saying, I think we should review this more carefully, that will trigger a full vote of the entire maintainership of that component. Uh, the lieutenant maintains veto power over the maintainers in their component, and the project lead maintains veto power over all the lieutenants. So this is uh, very, very much based on the, the same structure as OpenStack. Um, so we need you, yeah. Um, we need you as, uh, to, to join the, the lieutenant maintenance maintainer teams. Uh, in the Chef repository, there is a maintainers.md. The way that you join is you submit a pull request, adding yourself to whatever role you think you would like to fulfill. Um, the, the existing maintainers and lieutenants will then vote on, uh, on adding you. And if they add you, you just get commit bit. And then that's it. You can then commit things as you see fit. Uh, I will talk very briefly the governance process. Uh, this is RFC 29. Uh, it defines the chef board for governance. I'm aware that is not what those letters match to, but Adam thought it was funny. Um, it hasn't actually happened yet, so this is uh, a little bit in the vaporware category, but the idea is to create a board of 12 people. One will be the project lead who will serve forever, so that will be either Adam or John for the moment. Uh, four uh, ordinary users of Chef, four ordinary companies that use Chef, and three of the lieutenants from different components. They're elected yearly, uh, and they act in an advisory role. So they don't actually, like, they cannot spend money on the behalf of Chef Software Incorporated, but they will be there to consult with the, the corporate leadership and the project leadership to provide sort of a sounding board for, are we missing major use cases? Are we screwing up as a community? Yes? Uh, only kind of right now. Um, it's, it's on the edge. Uh, if you submit an RFC related to Test Kitchen, people would probably be cool with it, but it's not explicitly a component yet. Um, so anyway, so the governance board is really the, the human interface to the leadership of Chef as a project and as a company. Um, they, are, they are a gateway. And even more briefly, uh, RFC 20 defines the code of conduct and a little bit of information about uh, how the community advocate 
policy works. Uh, you can be a contact point for incidents if anybody is feeling uncomfortable in the community or thinks there's things that can be improved. Um, so check out RFC 20 if you're interested in volunteering for that. And community is made of people. So all of the, the whole RFC process is really about documenting how the community works uh, and making it more transparent for, uh, for additional users. So thank you. Let's give it up for Noah.